So we're in the home stretch uh, for the day, and our final two speakers need little introduction. Kevin Ackroyd from Badgeville, which I personally was very happy to see, announced its Series C funding round of $25 million a couple weeks ago, which I think really helped validate gamification um, in the mainstream. Kevin today will be joined by Wes Wasson, who's the CMO of Citrix, uh, and they're going to be talking about enterprise gamification, which is the fastest growing uh, segment in gamification. Let's welcome them to the stage. Uh, I'm very privileged to be talking about this. Uh, I am the Senior VP of Field Ops for Badgeville. Uh, I am honored to be joined by Wes Wasson, who is the CMO of Citrix. Uh, Wes is going to give us a few high-level 20,000-foot trends that he sees around the future of the enterprise. I'm going to pick up the stage and talk about gamification and engagement specifically for the enterprise. Uh, and then if we've got time left, we'll open it up for Q&A, OK? So please welcome Wes. All right. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Uh, you know, I heard this uh, gamification thing was hot. I didn't know it was so literal. But uh, uh, thanks so much. Welcome. And uh, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with Citrix, we are uh, just about a little over $2 billion leader in mobile and cloud computing, so clearly some of the hottest spaces out there uh, in about 99% of the Fortune 500. Uh, about 75% of the world's internet users go through Citrix infrastructure every day, and we power about 80% of the world's clouds. So the punchline of this is we happen to be at the epicenter of some of the most profound changes that are happening and kind of reshaping the way we think of enterprise uh, and business today. Uh, the, the wave of consumerization that, that changes everything from the bottom up. Uh, new generations of, of workers, employees, and customers who come in and have very, very different expectations of how they want to engage with us. Have uh, bringing their own devices, their own applications, their own way of working, their own work styles, and expecting us to conform to them. Uh, and this, this fundamentally changes everything about the way you think about running a successful uh, business today. Uh, and for those of you out there who may be hoping that this period of transition is simply a momentary thing we're going through as the industry shakes out during some transitions, I have some bad news. Uh, I believe the velocity and magnitude of change that we're seeing today and the degree to which control is gone from us and now in the hands of, of individuals uh, is the new normal. This is the hallmark of the next era uh, that we're going to live with for the next 10, 20 years. So we have to, as businesses, as leaders, uh, learn how to succeed in this new environment. Because these changes fundamentally disrupt everything. They disrupt how we interact with employees, talent acquisition, uh, how we attract new talent to our organizations. Uh, they disrupt how we interact with, with our customers and how they expect to interact with us. And increasingly, if you've been in business for a while, you're a large enterprise uh, uh, company, uh, you become uh, uh, vulnerable to disruption from the new companies coming in, the new startups who get it, who have employees who get it, and who are, who are very comfortable with engaging them in a very, very different way. In fact, I will tell you today that this transition we're going through in the industry is so significant. I believe there are companies on the Fortune 500 list today that will simply not exist in 10 years. And they're not going to exist because they failed to understand the relevance, the importance of how this kind of transition is going to disrupt their businesses, how it has to change everything about the way they think about engaging with customers, with employees, uh, competing on a very different kind of landscape. So what do you do? What do you do if you're a, a business leader and you're facing these kinds of disruptions and challenges and everything you've done to succeed in the last 10, 20, 30 years is suddenly being challenged? Well, I would, I would argue to you that much like this example here, like many things in life, in fact, uh, the answer is quite simple. It's love. Now think about it, right? It's about uh, recognizing that the way you're going to attract talent employees going forward uh, has nothing to do with being able to, uh, to lock them in. You can't treat customers that way. You can't treat uh, your, your, your employees that way. Uh, and you're no longer going to be able to block out competitors from these markets. You have to think very, very differently, and it's going to have to start 
with an assumption of a love relationship? How do you make them want to engage with you, want to stay with you, um, because there's a very different sort of emotional reaction. There's a value they get uh, that, goes, that, that transcends the actual products that you sell. Now, there's probably some of you out here, skeptics, who might look at this and say, oh, this is all fine and good, Wes, but a um, little problem with that analogy, uh, the love was all fine and nice, but didn't, didn't he die? Um, and I, 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 you know, I'll grant you that. There, there's a flaw there. But, but I, I believe that was not a failure of love. That was a failure of creativity. Now, throughout the movie, if you've watched this, you know, the cameras come in, they linger in with shots like this, and you got the music and Celine Dion singing, and the, you know, the tears are there, all this stuff's going on. But if you just change your perspective, and you look at this from the top down, you recognize something very interesting. There's actually a bit more room on that piece of wood than it appears from the first outset. In fact, if you actually apply some creative thinking to this, you would soon discover that there were actually many ways that they could have survived. Leonardo did not have to die. It was not a failure of love, it was a failure of creativity. I think this is the way we have to approach this as business leaders today. And we think about these ideas like gamification, like social engagement. It's very easy to lose sight of that. We get so serious. I would offer you three tips uh, for the business leaders out in the room today who are grappling with these kind of changes and trying to figure out where this stuff fits. And I'd say the first one, very, very simple. Uh, realize that gamification is not about virtual pigs. Uh, now, I say this, uh, uh, you know, recognizing Zynga is actually a, a wonderful customer of Citrix. Uh, we do a lot of work with them, so it's not saying anything negative about gaming itself. The point is that I believe this space, this technology, uh, this approach to engagement with customers, employees, and, and a competitive landscape uh, is going to be as fundamental and as big as many of the other categories that today we take very, very seriously in business. There is a tendency among serious business professionals to look at all of this as fluff, as questioning, you know, do I actually want to invest in this? Is it interesting? What's going to happen? This is going to be a very big space. Uh, I'm glad to be able to have the, the chance to be here today. Uh, I will be at one of these conferences here in the not too distant future where we're in Moscone North and it's a very, very different kind of event. I do believe that. Uh, second tip, and this is important, this is kind of like the Alcoholics Anonymous type of thing. You have to admit that you're no longer in control. Stop trying to control it, right? Uh, assume that control has been ceded to your customers, to your employees. They define the rules of the game now, and you have to think about this in a very different way. You have to change your perspective. Let me give you just one, one simple example to give you a sense of that. Uh, one of the things we think a lot about at Citrix is this notion of how the last era and the mindset we all approached it with uh, has to be very different from this, this new consumer cloud mobile era that we're entering. And you think about this, most of us in business have approached the last 10, 20 years of, of engaging uh, in our whatever business practice we're in with this assumption that employees join companies, right? An employee joins a company, and when they do, they adopt uh, my habits, uh, they adopt my badge, they adopt my working hours. Uh, we usually uh, uh, grace them with a nice, generic, general issue piece of black plastic and say, these are the six applications you will use. You will, you will work in this office, in this cube, in these hours, etc." Now, of course, that has to change. Uh, in fact, we, we like to think about this as entirely flipping the assumption around and saying, going forward, act as if the companies have to join the employees. Assume that, that employee is going to come into your, uh, in engaging with you, and they're going to have their own work styles. They're going to have their own uh, things that they like to do, the, the schedules that they like to work on. They're going to have their own devices. They're going to have their own applications. They're going to have their existing Dropbox accounts and Evernote's accounts and everything else. And they're going to bring that. And your job as an employer is to figure out how to deliver something into that employee's world. How do you engage them? How do you keep them excited and uh, 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 attaching to the vision that you're trying to deliver? Because that is going to be the key to success. You try to think about it in the old world, you will not succeed. You'll be one of those uh, Titanics going down. If you're a smaller company, it'll be the PT boat going down. The problem is you will fail. And the, third, the third and final uh, uh, piece of advice 
uh, that, that we think about a lot uh, at Citrix as we grapple with these transitions uh, is very simply to embrace the power of community. Uh, now, I, I'll give you one example here that uh, may be uh, instructive as well. Um, I run marketing uh, at Citrix and say about uh, four or five years ago uh, was when I really started to see uh, the profound impact some of these things could have. But one of the programs that we have uh, at Citrix, we're a technology company, uh, we had a program called Citrix Ready. Very common in technology kind of companies. This is a program to enable our customers to determine which of their other technologies were ready to work with something that Citrix provided. And when I inherited this team, uh, there was a whole team of people. Uh, we had uh, a huge budget. Uh, they were working for, uh, on this, and they had this, this beautiful catalog they'd put together with a grand total of about 350 products that were certified by Citrix and the other vendors to work together. A lot of money in this. And of course, the challenge was, as our footprint grew, as the industry grew, as the complexity grew, the burden to keep adding more people and more budget and more complexity to that grew. We couldn't keep up with it. So I came in and said, let me do something very different. I hired a VP of community. I brought him in, put him in charge of this. And I said, I want you to, to augment this with a user verified program. Put up a simple website. This is like you know, early, early days of some of the social stuff, you know, where someone can come in and say, yes, I use that technology with that product. And then somebody else could come in and you know, give a thumbs up. So I do as well. I got my name here, put that credibility out there. I'll tell you what happened. So after two plus years of trying this method and investing millions of dollars in teams and people and being frustrated with only 350 products, within 90 days, we had over 10,000 products certified on the Citrix Ready site. With all of these people coming in and voting saying, yes, I validate that, I use that as well. And here was the kicker. Not only did it not cost whole teams of people, right? didn't cost all the budgets, but at the end of it, you started seeing all these blogs and articles popping up saying, thank God Citrix has done this. This is far more valuable than the marketing stuff that I saw before that they put out because this is my peer group. I trust these folks. And it was a, it was a lesson I learned at that point that this is not just about leverage. In fact, I would say the question we ought to be asking ourselves when we think about this, this, uh, this area is not, are these new ideas around community and gamification valid enough that I ought to add them incrementally to what I do today. We need to flip that around and ask ourselves, are the things I'm doing today valid enough to be relevant and worthy of my time in a world where social gamification and community are the new standard, are the new norm? I think this is profound. I think it's a big deal. Uh, and if you'll pardon the pun, this is no game. So Kevin, all yours. Thanks, Wes. So thank you, Wes, for that excellent context and really good uh, you know, forward thinking. We talked, Wes just set the stage around how important engagement with your customers or your employees is. And we think that the future of the enterprise, one of the number one weapons in your, uh, in your, in your arsenal or arrows in your quiver happens to be gamification. And this is what's coming in the future. Uh, we're, we're 14 minutes into the 20 already, so I'm going to go a little faster than I expected. Uh, I'm going to touch on five key themes that we see when you're dealing with the future of gamification for business and the enterprise. The first one is, is that gamification is very powerful, but it's a subset of the overall engagement mechanics to pull this off. Game mechanics are the reward piece. I can do points, badges, trophies, levels, voting power, etc., but it is the reward piece. Equally important, if not more, and I'm going to make the case in a couple slides, probably even more important, is in a more social, whether it's employee facing or customer facing, rank, reputation, status, and how people view me is probably even more important. And then finally, we need to recognize and acknowledge that the social networks have, uh, have kind of trained us in an almost Pavlovian way. We see a new follower, we visit Twitter. We see a notification alert, we go to Facebook, right? We want to follow the wall, we want to be voyeuristic. We go to those sites 20 or 30 times a day and spend hours a day on them. So bringing those notifications, alerts, walls, like, follow, shares onto the enterprise's own sites, bringing reputation and game mechanics, bringing them holistically is how you're going to actually go pull off what Wes is talking about. That's point number one is gamification is a piece of engagement. Point number two, is that the future of the enterprise, you will take a platform approach. Normally, I wax prophetic on this one. I'm going to keep it simple and basically say, I'm not going to do this as a campaign. 
or just on this community or just in the sales organization. I'm going to look at this as a forward-thinking enterprise and think about it wall to wall as a platform across all of my customer-facing touch points and all of my uh, employee-facing touch points. And I'm going to start treating an engagement layer as absolutely necessary. I won't do a web or a mobile app or client or site without it. I won't do apps, I won't do enterprise systems, I won't do universal, uh, unified communications, I won't do point of sale without stopping and thinking and saying, what is my engagement strategy, what is the engagement layer? I simply will refuse to release without it. Uh, a couple of good examples, uh, EMC is a great uh, example. We uh, co-presented this with them at Enterprise 2.0 this week. Uh, starting with a community to drive high levels of engagement, subject matter expertise, ideas, et cetera, Connecting already, instead of just being customer-facing, partners, employees, and uh, customers, partners, employees, and customers, starting with a logical place, community, right? Jive is the social software container that it sits on. Badgeville is that engagement layer on top of Jive uh, to reward completion of tasks, subject matter expertise surfacing, encourage high-value behavior. But I'm not going to leave it sitting there in that social collaboration platform. I'm going to include external support communities, CRM, support systems. I'm going to inject this engagement layer across all of them, make it consistent across the whole experience so that I can actually reward and incent the key behaviors across all my apps. Another example, Oracle is just uh, you know, working with us. Again, they are taking a platform approach where customers, partners, developers, employees, all audiences are going to get subject to this engagement. And they understand the value so heavily that they recognize that if I want adoption, utilization, engagement, and the technology offerings that I want to offer my customers, I need to get these engagement mechanics into my technical offerings and are partnering with companies like Badgeville to go pull that off. Uh, rise of reputation. Uh, that's point number three. Again, normally I, I spend some time on this one. I need you to trust me on this. As you get more social, reputation is the most important thing. That's what this graph says, that if I want to influence your behavior, how I'm viewed, my rank, status, credibility is more important than the virtual privileges and rewards and certainly more important than the traditional financial incentives that we uh, give employees or customers. Uh, Reputation is everything, whether it's a subject, you know, specific community, whether it's an employee facing, whether it's a rating in a, in, a, in a community group or a product group. I want everybody to know it. I'm incredibly proud of it. I want it on my social networks. I want it on my resume. I want it on LinkedIn. I want it sitting on my desk, etc. I'm so proud of it that I'm going to do anything to get there and then keep it. Dell's a great example that started working with us about uh, Q4 of 2011. They recognized I've got a lot of communities everywhere from enterprise storage all the way to customer laptops. All of the engagement, my customer feedback ideation is in one platform, my social commerce is in another, my communities are in a third, same thing with employees. I've got a whole bunch of silos in here. And then even if I can get you to want to be a Jedi master of servers, for instance, the second I hit you in any of the other touch points, you might as well be an anonymous user again, right? So let's fix that because if I can want, make you want to get to level 10, or Jedi Master Reputation, and then that ports with you across all of the Dell touch points so that whether I'm on Dell.com, whether I'm in any of the 21 communities that are powered by Intelligent, uh, be they server, cloud, virtualization, whether I'm in the ideation platform, that profile, my rank, my reputation, who I am ports. And then let's just say I happen to take an action in one of those communities. Uh, again, basic gamification, I give reward, I give reputation within the profile, my reputation happens to actually increase based on this activity that I took in a, in a community. And now, this is where it stops today. In the future enterprise, instead of it just sitting in that Jive or Lithium or Intelligent community platform, now it updates in real time. And all 20 million people that are touching Dell today know that Emily just got to level one. They know that she's at 40 points. She's know they got rewards, et cetera. So her rank and reputation literally goes across everything in the uh, Dell touch point. And they're going to do the same thing with employee facing with CRM, LMS, et cetera. That's point number three. Point number four is that social is being ubiquitous. Again, what we think about social right now is customer facing its social networks, employee facing its this suite of social business, which you know, hats off to them. We now collectively as an industry spend over a billion dollars a year in social software. Problem is, again, it's in one of those software containers. That's it. It's constrained to that activity stream or that profile. And probably an even bigger problem is that across all of them, only 12% of your employees use them at all, and only about 3% of people are power users or frequent users. Again, social needs to be everywhere. Same thing. Just like rank, reputation, gamification needs to be everywhere, social needs to be everywhere. You need to take those social mechanics and embed them in all your systems. 
Same thing on customers, right? They don't come to you for social. They go to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, et cetera. Problem is, if I go to Facebook with my love and affinity for high-end consumer electronics, about four of my 1,000 friends care about consumer electronics and, and, and I can influence that opinion. Um, what we're helping organizations, that, that forward-thinking enterprises do is, let's go help Kevin connect with the other million people on bestbuy.com that also share the affinity for high-end electronics, right? So we're letting people deliver, you, what you need to do as a forward-thinking enterprise is deliver that social engagement and experience on your own site, your own mobile apps, with your own content products, and do what they do, right? Rich activity streams that are generic, or just high-end electronics, or just tennis shoes, or just tennis rackets, right? Real-time notifications on your sites, uh, follow with people to connect, uh, and then follow content products, et cetera, exactly like I can do on a social network. Bring that to the enterprise rather than get disintermediated by the social networks. And then finally, uh, and I'll make this quick, big data is behavior data. Over 175 clients, we're capturing over 3 billion activities every single month right now. So the data is contextual behavior data that is large, and we are actually helping people, uh, the, the, the forward-thinking enterprise needs to get very savvy around analytics and business intelligence to drive engagement, retention, loyalty, et cetera, for the purposes of fueling this engagement. And then probably even more importantly, now that I have the 712 pieces of behavior data tied to Kevin Aykroyd as an individual, right, not as a URL click path, not as a cookie, but to me, how do I not only fuel my engagement programs, but then use that rich contextual behavior data to fuel things like CRM, marketing automation, offer management, service, et cetera. So um, this is going to be, the future of the enterprise is going to be capture the data, use the data to fuel engagement programs, and then use it to actually fuel the rest of my organization in the Mr. Criminal Apps case. So that was it, that was my five points, and uh, I thank you for the time. Thanks. We'll do a question, we'll do one question. That, quick yeah, questions. so thanks, okay. Kevin and Wes, for laying out the business case for gamification. Right. It's where the rubber hits the road. So uh, we'll do a couple of quick questions, Perfect. and then I'm sure people can connect with you or your team at the booth over the next few Great. days. Great. Excellent. Thanks. So, questions, anyone? Give, yes. You want to come do, do we want to mic her so mic. everybody can hear it? I'm sorry? I do believe that the summit uh, distributes all the slideshows. That's my impression. That was easy. Okay. Other questions? It's 5.30, I'm tired. You just hit me with 40 slides. No? Well, the good news is, is there's a party going on <laughs> next right. door, so I'm sure people can grab some food and a drink and talk to you and your colleagues. Um, that concludes today's event. Tomorrow we'll be back here bright and early at 9 o'clock. If you're not at M. Herger, you're getting your butt kicked by him on the tweeter board, so I would encourage you all again to go to m.gsummit.com to join the fun and everybody enjoy your evening and the party and the award ceremony that's happening in the main hall. Thank you.